Hi everyone, so welcome back to the low coding. So in today's video, I want to try out Super Base Auth Helper with Next.js app directory. So with this documentation, we are going to do authentication. We're going to do data fetching with policies and also do the page protection as well. All right, so let's get started. All right, so on my left side right here, I have Next.js projects already. So I'm using Yon Create Next Apps. So from that, I can I configure uh, with the app directory so you can see right here when you run yarn create next app so you can follow all through the step it will generate you all this boilerplate also with tailwind css as well all right so right now it's nothing fancy it's just having the page that display this one so i'm going to create a new page that dedicate for authentication and for our authentication it's going to be really simple and we have one only one button to log in with githubs only all right so to do that i'm going to create the page uh, folder so it's going to be us right here and then if you want to have the page for this one you're going to do page.tsx and sitting using with typescript so from here and then we save this one right now if i'm going to the us page i can see this page right here so i'm going to do a little bit of styling to this one all right so you can see right here so we have the button right here that's right now it's not doing anything it's just the ui so right now, when I'm going to click on this one, we're going to call to Superbase, and then we are going to log in with GitHub's. So to do that, uh, if we follow this one, first we have to install this package Authapper right here, which I already did, and this one right here. And also in this documentation, they do not tell you to install this one, but this is necessary. So make sure you install this package as well and also when you run the super base and you might have encountered there's some lock error so and then you have to install encoding as well so you will see that it will prompt that this module is missing make sure you install this one as well so so that's all of the dependency that we need to install so if we go in through here first we need to set up the environment so this part right here so what we need to do is just copy and paste this one and then you go into your uh, local env and then you paste this one and then you can find this one from your super base projects so where to find it so you, if you go into your super base projects right here let's say i'm gonna go to home so this is one of my projects so you go to the project setting if you have existing projects already and go to api you can see right here this is the urls and this is the anon key that we need so copy this and copy this one and then paste it and replace it with this one all right so make sure you do that so after that so we need and then i'm choosing typescript right here so we need to create a middleware so middleware is necessary for this one so when we do authentication it's gonna have our session stored there so that's what we're gonna do so right now i'm going to create a middleware so where are we going to create a middleware so we can go into our app directory right here and then we can just create uh, create a middleware.ts so right now we can just copy and paste the content right here and right hand here you can see there's a squishy line right here so this one is just the type of this one and so since i'm not doing the type from my database so it's fine to remove this one as well so with superbase and typescript so you can import the type from your table and then it you, when you do some interaction to your table you will see that uh, we have this table name and the column something like that but this is, uh, I'm not focused on that, so and we don't, I don't want to do that, so I'm going to remove this one. So right now, our middleware is, is working, so it's we created. So the next thing is the last piece, I think it's important. So um, this one is going to be a uh, super base provider, so we're going to do that as well. So I'm going to copy the name of this one, and then we are going to create a file for it. And then this one, and then I'm just copy the whole content right here. And then once again, uh, we have this database type as well. So I'm going to just remove this one right here. And I think that pretty much it. So this one is pretty simple. So as you can see with Superbase provider. So we have the use effects right here. And this use effects do uh, what it does is just check if there's some auth state chain when we do some login with uh, GitHub or email or anything that related to us. When that's happened, we just do router.refresh. So what this does is just refresh uh, what will we fetch from the server uh, inside our server component. And then this one, we just unsubscribe because this is just a, sub a subscription function. And then we have the contact past the super base as the context provider. So we can use it uh, as a child of the pro this provider. 
So right here, we create the Superbase client and that will be able to use on a browser. So you can see right here, we do, there's two types. This one is create Superbase browser client, which means the Superbase will run only on the client's components only. All right. So we do this one and then we create this use Superbase right here and then with the use contact. So then we can accessible to the Superbase right here. All right. So right now we have the Superbase provider. So where do we put this one? We're going to go into the layout. So this is the layout of our app. So we can just wrap this one with the super base provider. And then we can put our body and uh, children inside here. And if you take a look at the super base provider, again, this is a client component because it's using with the use client right here. All right. So right now we have this one, so we can go back into our OS page right here, and then we can implement the login with GitHub. So right now, if I do on clicks and then I can access the super base from here. So on super base equal to use super base. And then we can access to the super base and then super base dot auth dot sign in with OAuth right here. And then inside here, we're going to pass a provider. And then the one I'm going to interested in is GitHub. So right now we have this on click right here, which is the problem. So if we look back at right here, this is the problem. And the problem is happening is because of the page by default, Next.js is the server component. And this page, this code right here run on the server, but our functions and our things right here, which is run on the client on the browser, which that's why it's, we have this error. So to fix this point uh, right now, as of now, I'm going to, I'm going to use the client. And so with this use client right here, it just tell the, this page that, okay, right now I want to run this one on the clients instead of this one on the server. And this function should be do something like this. Okay. So right now this one, everything, this code right here will render on the client instead of the server. So that's why we can be able to use this one. So right now, if we go back into the login.auth, so we can be able to log in with GitHub. So if I click log in with GitHub, see now I have done it before, it's automatically um, do this for me. So to set up with GitHub, it's pretty simple. So if you haven't do it yet, so um, you can go into the auth authentications and then you can go to your provider. And then inside the GitHub right here, you can be able to find up uh, the client ID and the client secret and the redirect URL and where you find the client ID right here is from your GitHub. And to find a client ID and client secret for GitHub, you can go into your profile setting and then you can go into the developer settings and inside here you can see your OAuth app. So from here you can create an existing one or you can choose the existing one so you, and then inside here so you can see right here we have the client id and the client secret and for the authorized url right here make sure you pass the url that you get from superbase which is this url right here so once you set that and make sure it's enabled so then you will uh, be able to log in with your github all right so right now we are logged in with github but we do not see any data so to do that so if you want to know if we are logged in or not so we can try to fetch the user information that we get so if we're going back to the page right here and this one right here, uh, so this is our home page that we, as you can see right here. So I'm going to try to get the session from this user, whether the user is logging or not. So to do that, as you can see, you can scroll down. There's two way as a client's component that we use with the super base. So what I'm going to do is going to try to fetch uh, the session for inside the server. So if we go into TypeScript right here, and this is what we're going to do. So I'm going to copy the code that we get from this one. And I'm going to paste this one right here. So it seems that we have to import this two as well. All right. So right now, and this database, again, we can remove this one. This one is fine. So right now we have the super base client right here that this one is run on the server. So what we can do with this one. So I'm going to run to try to get the sessions. So I'm going to do cons. And then we're going to have the data right here. And then we, what we can do is going to be super base dot auth dot get sessions. And this one is going to be a promise. So we can just do an a things and then we can do a wait right here. So right now we're going to have this data right here. So I'm going to show you what this data look like. So what we can do is going to be JSONs dot stringify this one. 
and now we're going to have the data and and then we're going to destructure to make it looks nice to read so you can see right here right now um it seems that we have a lot of this one so i can just do data.sessions and i see so i think uh, because of my style right here that's why it's uh, mess ups uh, it's really hard to read so what i can do i can just do something like this so we can paste this one right here and then we can just do something like this and if we scroll down right here so you can see this is the session so right now that's after i'm locking and i have this session right here so you can see so it means right now i'm locking and which is really nice so it means our authentication is complete now we're going to focus on data fetching with policy so with Superbase, we can have the policy to protect user data. Only the right user can get their data, uh, data. So as you can see right here, this user right here has this ID. And if we, um, if I come back into my Superbase project, I have this table that I created existing before. And I have this table called test right here. And this test right here has one record of data. And that was created by the user that was logged in uh, GitHub that I showed you before. This is um the data so inside this table right here we have one actual policy and the policy is going to be really simple if we take a look at this policy so we are going to allow the you uh, the user to read from this data if they are authenticated or the uh and their id is the same so right now only the user that only their data they can read only the data only so you can see and so we're going to try to do this one so right now inside the super base right here so what we can do we can get this one so cons and we can try to fetch this one so i'm okay i can copy the code from here and then because this code right here is doing the same thing it's for this fetch and but instead of the post table we're going to do test and then with this data i'm going to choose do test data right here okay so this one will fetch and then we can just do the same things to this one so i can comment this one since we done really need to read this one and oh i can just do something like this i can just do and then we can do test data right here so if we go if we come back right here so you can see we have this data right here and i'm kind of block this one so all right so you can see right here we have our test data and this one is get it from the user uh, that was created so if i going to create a new data so for example i'm going to create insert a new row and the id is going to be randoms and then let's do yeah i think just name and it's going to be testing and i hit save so this one it was created by a random user so you can see right here so if we're going to refresh this one and then we're going to fetch so you can see we fetch only the specific user that we get even though we pass this one we doesn't specify like okay i'm going to select all from this table with this user id we don't do that but with the policy that we set up and it was correct to fetch the correct data for us so right now our data fetching with policy has been done and it works perfectly so i think so we can complete this data fetching so the next part is going to be page protection so with the page protection so you can see right now after i log in so if i go into the local host auth right here i can be able to see this one but we don't want to this to happen right because when we after we log in so we do not want the user to be accessible to this page so to be able to do that we can come back to our auth page and then to i what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna copy everything right here and i'm gonna transform this page to the server page instead so because right now this one is a client page and so i'm going to convert it to the client page uh server page so first i'm going to create a component for this one and then what i can do is just going to be off of tsx and then i'm going to do something like this and then i'm remove and paste all the contents and then i'm going to use the super base and so right now we have our auth page right here so i can just remove this one right here and then inside here i'm going to just do return and then we're going to do os and then this one is going to fail again so because uh, i'm going to need to use this one it's going to be use client okay so right now we have our clients component inside our os page and inside here we can do something similar to this one 
which is going to create a super base server client. So that's one that will run on the client uh, on the server. So I'm going to copy and paste this one and we need to import this two as well. And so right now, as you can see, we have the super base client that we can access to get session. So right now we can do the same things. We can try to get the sessions and then I need to do the A things right here. So right now we have this data and then we can check if data dot sessions and then so if I think there's a session and then we can do dot again no okay if there's a data dot session so we're gonna return redirect so we're gonna redirect this one to the this page right here so you can see if I were to refer so it's automatically pick up so right now if I were going to the page this page again and I won't be able to access because this one rendered from the server and it check everything. Okay, hey, uh, you have a session. You not. Uh, we're gonna redirect you to this page instead. So we're gonna do similar uh, something similar on the page, on this page right here, on the home our home page. So if there is no sessions, so we can see. So right now it can be like uh, user. We can do active sessions. So we have our better name. So if there's an active session, that session, we can just do redirect right here and then to off. So this condition right here, check if there's no sessions, we're going to redirect you back. So the way that we do to test this one, we can create a sign out component and then we place it inside here. So we can see that. So I'm going to do this one only nine six only. Okay. So right now I'm going to create the lockout component. So it's going to be lockout.tsx and then we can just do see right here and this is our client component so we can do use client and then inside here we're gonna do something similar which is we're gonna have this button right here and then with this button right here we can just gonna do lockout and then for our on click we need to use our super base so we can have our super base is coming from equal to use super base right here and so right now we have our super base, but instead of sign out, uh, sign in with OWASP, well, we can just do sign out right here. And then we can just do await this one as well. And then when we do await, we need to do the A things for uh, this one as well. All right. So right now we have our lockout components. So we're going to place it inside our page, the home page right here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just going to do the lockout to make sure it's auto import for me. So right now as you can see we have this lockout button right here so whenever i click this one the expectation behavior is we're going to redirect to our auth page so when i click on lockout so as you can see it indeed redirect me to the auth page so i think that pretty much it's guy so right now if we i'm um, test again so i'm locking with githubs and after locking is complete it will redirect me to the home page and then it will do fetch some data and everything's in place right here all right, so this is me from the future. So as you can see right here, uh, we have fetched this two data and then we're going to do the page protection right here. If there's no sessions, we're going to redirect them to OS page. But this is not gonna a good idea because you don't want to do the session and then fetch at the same time. You have to move this one and then put it below because this one it will work better because first of all, we're going to do check. We fetch this one if there's a session. We're going to do the redirect and things like that. And if uh, it's whether it's past this one, if it's much this condition, it will redirect to the auth page if there's no session. But if there is a session, but and the, there's a user login, we can fetch this data. So this is a better approach than before. All right. So I think that um, we cover up all the three points that we're going to do in this video, which is the first one is authentication, data fetching with policy, and then the page protection as well. So this is going to be really simple and you can also learn more and read more from the documentation from Superbase. And so with this boilerplate and with this, uh, we know how to pay protection data fetching with some policy. And then in the next video, we're going to use this one to build a more useful application. So I hope see you in the next video I, and I hope you like this video as well. All right, so don't forget to subscribe and like this video and see you in the next videos. Bye-bye.